Okay, so here we're going to look at consumers and producers surplus. So if we let P equal D of X be the price demand equation for a product, where X is the number of units of the product that consumers will purchase at a price of P dollars per unit, suppose that P bar is the current price and X bar is the number of units that can be sold at that price. Then we get the price demand curve shown here. Okay, and that is if the price is higher than P, the demand X is going to be less than X. So basically, you know, here P of X and here's the X bar. So that's P prime, P bar and X bar. And if the price is higher, what happens is to get onto that curve, we have to go down. And so it's going to be at a lower value. Okay, so uh, then it shows that if the price is higher than P bar, the demand X is going to be less than X bar, but some consumers are still willing to pay that higher price. Now, the consumers who are willing to pay more than P bar, but who are still able to buy the product at P bar have saved money. Now, we want to determine the total amount saved by all consumers who are willing to pay a higher price than that P bar for the product. To do this, we're going to consider this interval down here from CK to CK uh, uh, plus delta X, where CK and and plus delta X is less than or equal to X bar. So it's going to be less than that. Now, if the price remained constant over this interval, the savings on each unit would be the difference between the D of CK, the price consumers are willing to pay, and P, the price they actually pay. Now, since delta X represents the number of units purchased by consumers over the interval, the total savings to consumers over this interval is going to be equal to uh, the D of CK minus P bar and all that times delta X. So basically, the savings per unit times the number of units. Now, that's going to be the area of the shaded rectangle shown in figure eight. So that's basically this area here. So that's the delta X and that's the D of CK minus the P bar. Okay. Uh, and then if we divide that interval uh, zero to X bar into N equal sub intervals, then this total savings to consumer is going to be approximately, well, now we have to have, you know, the C1, the C2, the C3, all up to the CN, and we're doing all those. And so that's going to be basically the sum of the D sub K minus P bar delta X from, you know, one to whatever N is. Now, if we remember our Riemann sums from a little bit ago, we know that then that's going to be uh, from zero to X bar of D of X minus P bar DX. And that's going to be called the consumer surplus. Okay. And if we look at that as a picture here, you know, we've got, you know, our D of X curve here and our P bar, our X bar, and this is going to be the consumer surplus area. Okay, so again, if we have X bar and P bar as a point on the graph of the price demand equation where P is equal to D of X for a particular product, then the consumer surplus or the CS at a price level of P bar is given by this formula here. Basically, it's the integral from zero to X bar of D of X minus P bar DX. And the area is going to be between P and P bar, P equals P bar and P equals DX from zero to whatever that X bar is as shown here. Now, the consumer surplus represents the total savings to consumers who are willing to pay more than P bar for the product, but are still able to buy the product for a P bar. Okay, so that's how much their savings if they're willing to pay this, but they still only pay that P bar price. Now, that means so let's do an example similar to that. So it says find the consumer surplus at a price level of now instead of $8, we're going to do the $4. So I'll do that in case I forget to change it <clears throat> for the price demand. P equals D of X equals 20 minus 0.05 X. So what happens is now we're going to say, okay, well, let's plug in our X bar. So P bar then is equal to 20 minus 0 0.05 X bar. Well, P bar, they said, is going to be what? 4 equals 20 minus 0 0.05 X bar. Solve for X bar, so we're going to subtract 20. So it's going to be minus 16. And then divide by 0 0.05. And 16 divided by 0 0.05 is going to be 320. So that gives us X bar equals 320. <clears throat> so what does that look like for our graph? Okay. Well, if... We plot this in a general rough sense, since I can't draw anyway, we're just going to do that. What's going to happen is we're going to have some P bar here, which we said was 4. And our X bar we just found was 320. And what we want to find is this C 
SDS, you know, the consumer surplus. And we know that that's 20 because that's going to be our intercept. We know it's going down by 0.05 per unit and stuff. And so what we're going to say is, okay, well, let's take the integral from 0 to 320. And now we'll take the upper curve, which is going to be the 20 minus 0.05x minus the lower, which is this one, which is y equals 4, so minus 4 dx, okay? Well, here we have 20 minus 4, so that's going to be 16. So when you take the integral of that, it's going to be 16x. Integral of that's going to be minus 0.05x squared over 2, and we're going from 0 to 320. So I'm kind of doing multiple steps here, hoping you can get used to doing that. So you just take the 20 minus 4, get 16. The antiderivative of 16 is 16x. Then the antiderivative of that is this. And so now we're going to say, take 16 times 320 minus 0 0.05 times 320 squared all over 2. And if you plug in 0 in, those are 0. So now we just have to plug that in. So we have 16 times 320 minus 0 0.05 times 320 squared divided by 2. And we get 2560 is going to be the consumer surplus. So that's how much they're saving there. Okay, and that's by paying at this price, even though they'd be willing to pay all the way up to here. Okay, so that's kind of the key in this one. All right, so let's stop there. We'll come back for some more.